to neutralize the reflex, and at the very end, subtract a working distance to come up with your final prescription. So what about astigmatism? Now this has been pretty easy so far. If it was this easy, anyone could do it. It's not an issue. Let's look at another eye. Step one, start with width. Good. We can proceed to step two. Let's start adding some power. We'll add a plus one. Okay, we're still with not quite there yet. So let's check the other axis, not quite there yet. We're getting there. Let's add another diopter of power. All right, plus two, let's try this. It looks like we maybe have hit it here. In fact, I think we have. Okay, let's check the other axis. Uh-oh, we still need some more power this direction. Don't worry about axes, is it 90, is it 180? Just keep your instrument in the same position. Set that lens aside and keep going. Set it aside, keep going. Start adding power and we'll continue moving our beam left and right until we get it. Boom, we've got it. And so these are our two lenses. Now don't try to do the math in your head while you're doing this. Here is how I calculate the prescription based off this. The sphere is plus two. The cylinder power is the difference between them, so it's a plus two, plus one. It's just like using a lensometer, right? You start at one number and the amount you shift it is your cylinder power. Same thing with this. So it's, this is a plus two, plus one, and the axis is at 90. And we know it's at 90 because our light beam is going up and down. And if you're not sure, hold your light beam up to the phoropter and look at the little angular degrees on there and make sure it's lined up with 90. And that's how I remember it. I don't try to think I was moving left and right, but the axis is always 90 degrees off the power. It'll confuse you. Just put these lenses aside, and at the very end, look at it. This is a plus 2, plus 1 at 90. So we write it out. A plus 2, plus 1 at 90. But remember, there's one last step, and that is to subtract your working distance. And you subtract it from the sphere, and that's all. You don't need to subtract it from your cylinder power. So the final answer here is a plus 50, plus 1 at 90, and that's the prescription. Let's do another example. All right, step one, always start with width. You have to start with width or you'll become confused. All right, so we've got width motion in both directions. Let's start adding power. Still have width, so not enough yet that direction. Let's try this direction. No, nope. still need more. Let's add some more power. Try plus two. All right, we're getting close. Our beam is getting a little wider. Not, we're nowhere near in this direction, though, so let's keep adding power until we neutralize these things one at a time. So let's try this way. No, nope. still need a lot more this way. However, this way, uh, we've got it. This is the right prescription in this direction. Let's set this lens aside. Set it aside or you'll forget. Just set it aside. Keep adding power and let's go back to the other direction until we fix that too. Still have width, not quite there yet. Let's try this plus five lens. Perfect, now we have the right power for that. Meridian, set the lenses aside and now you can start thinking about the numbers and writing these things down. So this prescription is what, it's a plus three, plus two, it's the difference between them, and the axis, we can just look at where our light beam is oriented right now, it's going sort of horizontal, we know the axis is at 180. So the answer is a plus three, plus two at 180. Write it down, don't do the math in your head, just write that down, and at the very end, subtract your working distance, and our final prescription is a plus 150, plus two at 180. Not too bad. Let's do another example. This is good practice. All right, we've got against motion. We can't start with against motion, you're gonna get confused. So what do we have to do? We need to back off because you've got to start with width before you can figure these things out. So let's put a minus two up. Good. We've got width motion that way. We still have against. This is no good. You cannot have against motion at the beginning. You'll get confused. So let's throw a minus four. If I've got to go to minus ten, so be it. Ah, uh, now we have width motion in that direction. We have width motion in this direction. Now we can continue and add power until we neutralize it. So let's add a diopter. Minus three. We still have width. Not quite there yet. Let's check the other direction. Ah, oh, we've got it. We've got it this direction. Let's set this lens aside. Set it aside, you'll get confused. Just set it aside, get a stronger lens, and keep going the other direction. So, we're gonna add a little power. No, nope. still need a lot more, it looks like. That's surprising. Okay, let's add some more power. A minus one, let's try that. I think we may have it. This might be it. Do I try it for more? Do I dare? Let's try Plano. No, nope. Plano's too strong. The minus one was the right one. So put these lenses aside. Put them aside. If you don't put them aside, you'll get confused. Now you can write it down. This is a minus three. The difference is a plus two. And the axis is at 90. You write this down. Minus three, plus two at 90. Then you do the math. Subtract your working distance. And the final answer is a minus 450, plus two at 90. Not too bad. All right, we're going to do this one more time. We have against motion here. It's no good. Can't start with against, you gotta have width, you can't continue. Nope. 
still a problem. It's okay this direction, but it doesn't matter. You've got to start with width in every direction, otherwise you'll become confused. So let's throw a minus 4. All right, we definitely have width this, so this is good. Let's try the other axis, make sure it's still good. Now we have width in all meridians. We can continue with step two, which is where we add power to neutralize the reflex. Try minus three. I think we've got it. We've got it this direction. So let's set this lens aside before we get confused. And now we'll continue to add power and work on the other direction. So we'll try minus two. <coughs> no, not quite there yet. We're getting closer, though. I think we're getting closer. Let's try minus one. I think we've got it. I think this is it. Set it aside, then write things down. This is a minus 3, plus 2, that's the difference between them, and the axis is at 180. Write that down, minus 3 plus 2 at 180, then, and only then, do you subtract your working distance from that sphere power, and your final answer is a minus 450 plus 2. All right, we're going to do this one more time, and then we'll continue on. I know I'm beating this into you, so I'm sorry. Start with against. This is no good. You can't have against motion. You gotta have with. Still have against. This is no good. We can't have this. We gotta have with motion. Minus four. Finally, finally we have with motion. Let's make sure it's in both axes. Good. We have with in both axes. Only now can we continue. Let's start adding some power. Step two. We'll add a minus three. Oh, not quite there yet. Let's try the other way. Perfect. We've got it in this way. What do we do with our lens? We set it aside. So I'm gonna put this on the counter. Go get a more strong lens and we'll work on that other direction. Still have width, might need a bit more. Let's get a stronger one. Minus one. Still have width. You know, it actually looks like I might need a whole bunch more looking at my re reflection here. So let's add more. Plano, that's a doctor stronger than minus one. Nope, not quite there yet. Plus one. I think we're getting closer. We may have it. This person has a ton of astigmatism. Plus two, let's try it. I think we got it. This looks like it's our answer. Uh, I'm getting greedy now. We're going to try a plus three, and we've gone too far. So the answer was a, was a plus two. So you set these aside. Perfect. And what is our answer here? It's a minus three plus five. And our axis, as you can see where my light beam is oriented right now, is at 180. So you write it down, and only then do you do the math, subtract your working distance, minus 450, plus five at 180. All right, three steps to retinoscopy. Remember these? I know you do because we just said them like five million times. You've got to start with width. Then you add the power, and at the very end you subtract. But let's do astigmatism because all that stuff, uh, well, we've been doing astigmatism. I take that back. Let's do against the rule stuff. Technically, we've been doing a rule of astigmatism, either against the rule or with the rule. Let's do unrule, something in between. We haven't really been doing angles yet. What does that look like? Well, here we go. All right. We've got, uh oh, what is this? Our reflection is at a funny angle, isn't it? That's odd. So what do you do? You just rotate your beam so that you're in sync with that angle, and then you continue doing your steps just like before. You gotta start with width. All right, I've got width in that direction. This is good. Do I have width this? No, I'm still against. This is no good. We have to start with width. You have to start with width. You'll get confused. Let's try minus four. Perfect. We've got width motion that way. We've got width motion that way. Now we continue with our standard retinoscopy technique. Step two, we start adding power. So we'll add a doctor. Let's see if we got it. Nope, not quite there. We may be close to the other direction. Let's try. Perfect, we got it. We've got the prescription that way. Let's take that lens, set it aside. You'll get confused otherwise. Just set it aside. Keep adding power until you get the other direction. All right, we're getting close. Not quite there yet. Let's add another diopter. I think this is it. This looks like it. All right. Set the lenses aside. Yes? So if, you, so if on your first pass you see it's that oblique, you're not going to go with horizontal vertical. You're going to stick with the obliques. Yep. I try to get it so that the reflection looks exactly in the direction that I'm moving. And it's hard to figure out sometimes, especially if it's a funny angle or it's a funny reflex, but you do your best. And as far as figuring out this prescription, it's all the same steps. Once again, we set our lenses aside. We look at it. This is a minus 3 plus two, and you look at your axis, and if it's not obvious, you hold it in front of your foropter and look at the angles on that thing. I'm gonna estimate this is about a 90, 120, and so what do we end up with? We end up with a minus three plus two at 120. Last step, you gotta subtract your working distance and you end up with this prescription, a minus 450 plus two at 120. All right, so, yes? Um, I sometimes get confused when I get that scissoring. Yes. 
Well, you know, we're so far we've been assuming that the eye is a perfectly spherical structure and the lens is perfectly spherical and it focuses at a single point. But the reality is the eye has a fair amount of aberrations. The cornea is not perfectly spherical, it has a slope out at the edge, and that slope can cause some distortion. The lens is actually steeper in the middle, it's the opposite, and so these spherical aberrations can cause issues. Plus, if they have a cataract, the center of the cataract may be stronger than the outside of the cataract, and you may have a different movement of the light in the center compared to the outside, so it's going in different directions and it gets very, very confusing. The key is just to look at where the light is right in the middle of the pupil as best you can and you do your best. That's all you can do. And sometimes you just don't get it, but you try. But, in summary, three steps, start with width, add the power, then you subtract. And now we're going to test ourselves with a couple of cases. These will go fast. This is the speed at which I retinoscopy, and we'll see if we can figure it. And we're going to do everything in our head. I'll talk out loud just to keep us from getting bored, but we're going to do everything in our head. So here we go. <laughs> Start with width. Good that direction. Good that direction. Okay. Let's add some power. Plus one. Uh, not quite there yet. Not quite there yet. Let's add some more power. Plus two. Okay. 150. Okay. We're getting there. Oh, I think we've got it. I think we've got it. Let's put this lens aside and continue on in the other direction. Let's try plus two. No, not there yet. Plus three. I think we got it. This is the prescription. Now if we do this in our head, this is a... Oh, let's try four. I'm getting greedy. Sorry. No, too far. I'm glad I set that first lens aside, otherwise I would have lost it and forgotten. So, what's our prescription? It's a plus 150, plus 150 at 180. In our head, we do the subtraction, and it comes out to being a Plano plus 150 at 180. And let's see if we're, we are correct. Plano plus 150 at 180. That's how we do it. Let's do a harder one. All right. Well, I think we got up right off the bat. Good. So that's a Plano that direction. Oh, we still need some more power that way. So let's add a plus one. No, nope, not quite there yet. Let's add another one. We're getting closer. Our reflection's getting larger. Let's add another one. I think we've got it. Perfect. Am I getting greedy? I am getting greedy. Let's try it. No, we've gone too far. So let's get that plus three lens out. Lay down the counter before I forget. And our answer is it's a Plano plus three, plus three at 90. And we do the math in our head. And the final answer is a minus 150 plus three at 90. Let's see if we've got it. Perfect. Minus 150, 390. One last one. This is our last one, I promise. Oh, it's a funny angle. Got to change. All right, good. We've got width motion in this direction. That's fine. We've got against. No, that's no good. We can't have against. You've got to start with or you're going to get confused. Let's throw a minus two. Perfect. We've got width motion that way. We've got width motion that way. We can continue. Let's add some more power to the system. Not quite there yet. This direction. We've got it this way. Let's set our lens aside. We're going to get confused and keep going the other way. Plano, no, not quite there yet. Plus one. No, they've got a fair amount of astigmatism. Not quite there yet. Plus two. Let's try it. Oh, no. Man, this is a high astigmatism. Let's try another one. Okay, we're getting close. I can tell. Let's add another one. Boom, we've got it. So, set our lenses aside. Do the math in our head. This is a minus one plus five total. And the axis is about 45 degrees. You do the math in your head and it ends up being a minus 250 plus 5 with an axis of 45 is our final answer. Minus 250 plus 5 at 45. I have put the sample in your notes so that you can kind of figure out how this works. The same photo from this last one is in there, so it should make sense. But in summary, there are three steps to retinoscopy. You have to start with width. Then you can add power to neutralize the reflex, and you may have to do it in different meridians and set your lenses aside. And the last step is you subtract your working distance at the end. Thank you.